In this video, I'm going to show you how to estimate the PI of a short peptide. The first thing we want to recognize is that in a short peptide, there are two ends, and both of them are ionizable. The amino terminus has a P pK of approximately 9, and that's going to vary uh, quite a bit, actually, but just for the sake of this uh, illustration, I'm going to leave it at about 9, and then we have the COOH, which has approximately a pK of 2. Again, that could change uh, quite a bit. <clears throat> um, next thing we need to do is go through and look at the R groups and see which ones are ionizable. I'm going to put a negative charge by the ones that are ionizable that are neutral to begin with and then lose a proton. And I'm going to po put a positive charge by the ones that are uh, positively charged and then lose a proton to become neutral as the pH is, is increased. So I have a glutamate here negative charge, and then I actually have glutamate here, glutamate, spartate, glutamate, and then glutamate, and then of course the C terminus. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, negatively ionizable. And we're actually going to include tyrosine in this group as well, because tyrosine can lose its proton at approximately um, 10.5 <clears throat> and then I'm going to go through and do the positives so histidine is positive arginine, lysine two lysines, two arginines another lysine and then the N terminus which is already has a positive so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 nine plus charges. So the way that we do this is we start at a very low pH, say pH 1, and then increase the pH gradually and look at which protons fall off in which order. And then from that we can do a determination and find the pi which is at the charge of zero. So if we start off at nine plus, first thing to lose its proton is going to be this C terminus right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a hash through that. And the next thing to lose its proton will be the uh, aspartate. Now we're at 7 plus, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 glutamates. <clears throat> so I'm just going to draw arrows for all of them, even though in reality they would lose their protons at the same time, one, two, three, four, and then down to two plus, five. It's not really important to know the numbers here because we're not at the uh, charge of zero yet. And then going to one plus, the next thing that will lose its proton will actually be this histidine here. Let's go ahead and cross off all the ones that we've that have lost their protons. Next thing to go would be that histidine. And now we're at um, zero. The final one, or, or actually the next one, is going to be this uh, amino terminus. And then here's where we do need to know the numbers. So the amino terminus is, um, again, going to vary a little bit. We're going to call it nine, approximately nine. And then the uh, next one to lose a proton is actually going to be um, this tyrosine or the lysine. They have pKa values that are, that are pretty close to each other at about 10.5. So um, I will just say lysine <clears throat> in this case, which has a um, pKa of about 10.5. And so these are the important numbers here. But you have to go through this process in order to see which two are flanking that zero charge. So in order to find the PI, we're just going to take the 9 plus 10.5 and divide it by 2. And that will give us um, 9.75 is our PI. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful.